build no. to please a few or I, build to help the many? I, which is better? Which is better? I, I'll what? tell you. I believe the rich should be harvested sustainably. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to think about it. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that ha it ha happens in San Francisco that I that I've tracked with all this tonnage of paperwork I carry around um, is that the value of the land is a misnomer because even if you build low cost affordable housing only a percentage of the housing is low cost affordable. And even that, if you look at the mayor's office of housing, the way they design the scale for um, determining what's affordable, um, right now 100,000 a year for a family of four is considered affordable. Um, and so they're building housing for people to make $100,000 a year. and. They're not building housing for people who make twenty-five thousand dollars a year or less. Yeah. And um, one of my biggest beefs I have with Mayor Lee's office is you have a project working on supporting housing for the homeless, and yet you're not building any. Because how many homeless people do you know have a hundred thousand dollars a year? Ninety percent, probably hundred percent of the homeless make less than $10,000 a year. Really? And we're not building housing for us. So, so it looks to me that instead of being a real democracy going on here is reverse the order right now, whereas the people who really count are not counted. So. And something else to think about um, that is really intensely important in this is one of the biggest cuts coming down is 202 and 212 housing development for people with disabilities. Um, the last word I had was that the, the Trump administration eliminates the programs. So there will be zero construction for disabled housing, zero construction for veterans housing, and zero construction for senior housing under the Trump administration budget proposals. He's worse than ever. Thank you. On that note, um, I just wanted to pass around some flyers. I think a lot of you have already seen, but um, this flyer is actually for all of the meetings that we have, but specifically um, there's the land use workshop and task force. That's what I was talking about. Um, also on the back we have the Civic Center Public Space Task Force, which is what I was also talking about in terms of the Civic Center redesign, um, and Tenderloin Solidarity, that's the group that's looking at uh, federal issues. So those are all groups related to things that we were just discussing, um, and should I just put them just here? Put them um, and then also I just have these um, for there's, um, as people know, there's a June election, and this really impacts planning in the city, both in terms of who our mayor is, which as a nonprofit I'm not allowed to weigh in on, but we are allowed to weigh in on propositions, and there's a few propositions that I think are pretty relevant to planning, including funding for housing, um, and what are the other ones? That's the main one that's related to planning. So if you're interested um, in learning more about the ballot measures, we're having an event next Wednesday. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Lieutenant, if you have to leave, you can. No, sure. I was, going to, I was going to ask, with everyone's approval, after this presentation, would it be okay if I uh, skipped and jumped ahead, just in case I have to leave? Because I would like to talk about what we're doing at Tenor One Station, if that's agreeable. Is that all right with the uh, developer? Is uh, you know what? It depends on how many questions. <laughs> I, I will be a sh shorter than I normally am. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Hold. Well, on. and not because I take off my shoes. Okay. Uh, let me just bring this over here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Let me bring this over here. I'm Suzanne. Here. I'm okay. sorry that you all be behind. Okay. Well. Are you the Chinese version of this, but I will be speaking in English. Uh, I'm with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. The reason we're on is water is that because the Public Utilities Commission provides actually three vital services in San Francisco. Water is one of them. We actually provide the drinking water for, or some are, 
some or all of the drinking water for 2.7 million Bay Area customers, which include all of the residents of San Francisco. We also treat um, the sewage and storm water that falls in San Francisco or that you flush down your toilet or <clears throat> out down the sink or whatever. And we also provide very clean hydroelectric and other uh, renewable energy. One of the features of that energy is that it's all of the municipal load of San Francisco. So the lights at City Hall, uh, the airport, the schools, the electric minibuses, that's all clean hydroelectric power that comes as a result of the water department's system. We bring water down from uh, Yosemite National Park and through the transmission of that water it generates hydroelectricity. It's kind of cool. This, uh, we've been in the business now with water for about a since 1913, uh, we purchased the Spring Valley Water Company and have since then grown to provide, again, water for San Francisco and uh, throughout the Bay Area, about 2.7 million people. The organization has about 2,300 employees. We work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, so that you're all, we always have water. And you can always be confident that when you flush the toilet, it's going to be treated and discharged in a clean and safe way so that we can protect public health, not only for people, but for the ocean and bay that surround us. Um, the water is really high quality. I noticed a couple of people with bottled water and I wanted to say that what we are very confident in and what I um, know from my own personal experience is that the tap water in San Francisco is among the highest quality in the country. And in fact, I would even say the world. We treat it very well. We test it over 100,000 times a year. And environmentally, it's much more sustainable than a plastic bottle. Um, and so uh, if I could encourage you to drink tap water, of course, to run the system like this and to pay uh, the employees and to maintain it, it takes money. And 100% of the resources that pay for the water, wastewater, and power services I've already described come from water rates the bills people pay for the water. In this building, it is paid by TNDC. So residents in this building, and probably most of you, don't pay an individual water bill. However, it is important to know that these services are, pay, are paid for 100% by water rates. We are not uh, funded by federal, state, or local taxes of any kind. It's all water rates. We keep those rates as affordable as possible, but we do have to go through periodic rate setting processes. So frustration around voting, I get it. Frustration around lack of, of accessibility to those in charge of those systems, that's something um, I used to work in uh, for a state elected official. Um, and so uh, the pain we all feel about non-attention to our needs, I understand completely. We pay close attention to your needs in this, in this city and in our service area by doing all we can to maintain our infrastructure. Yes. I noticed when it says sewer capital improvements. Right. Uh, that means you can't be maintaining all the sewers and all that. Absolutely. Okay, well I have a problem with that part. Okay. The, the fact what I've been seeing is that the sewers down here on the streets are the water at a very high level I, and have not been drained. Yes. I don't know how long. I saw that this afternoon when I went for lunch at the corner of Hyde and Golden Gate. There was the catch basin was completely clogged. And it's so been, one of the... It's been there for a bit, so I didn't interrupt you. But it's been that way for a very long time. For a long, long time. time. Yeah, I took a picture of it today. Um, so, the, so what happened is uh, in 20, 2002, voters, and I know you all are going to vote, uh, voters supported the Public Utilities Commission by authorizing us to sell bonds so that we could fix the water system. Now, we're doing the same thing to fix the sewer system because much of the sewer system was installed 100 years ago. Those sewers, the, the, they're bricks and they're full of, well, let's not even, um, yeah. We're one of two, we're the only city in California that treats all of the stormwater as well. So in a day like today, when you have a heavy rain, sometimes the sewer uh, system cannot take it all in at once. And so we're improving and fixing that with these new uh, rates. Again, most of you will not be directly impacted. And if the property that you live in and that you pay rent to uh, determines that they want to increase your rent because of new water rates, they can only apply a very small part of that capital 
there is no fault. It was the capital. And the capital that. improvement. Yeah. Those capital improvement dollars. A, a small percentage of those could be charged to tenants, but okay. probably not. Point, point of information. Yes. Because this is a HUD property. Right. Uh, we're done differently on that. Yeah. Um, people who pay rent um, directly to their manager, um, if they pay their own utilities, uh, they will find that the management of their property can raise their rent for a percentage of any of increase. increase. Of, the cap of the increase that goes toward the capital improvement yeah. only. Now, if, if, the, if, the water, if the water sewage had not been maintained all this time, isn't it kind of unreasonable to charge people more money to money you have to give you all this time to take care of that, have not been taken care of? Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's one perspective. Our perspective is we had about a, I don't know, 10 or 12 year period where we, our rate were frozen. And so we, we had no additional income to do this maintenance. And now, because things have, they're 100 years old, and just like anything else, if you don't maintain it regularly, it will begin to show signs of wear and tear and deterioration. Mm -hmm. So this is an effort and it's gonna take a, a 20 years. The water system improvement program that started in 2002 is not finished yet because we're still working at increase, you know, and paying increased attention to the infrastructure. <laughs> but if we don't do it now, it's gonna get worse and it's gonna cost more. Mm -hmm. So. That's what we're doing. So, the, but what I really want to emphasize is one, the quality of the water is second to none. And so, um, I know what the we charge per unit of water here, and compare that to a bottled water. You're going to pay about if you pay a water bill, you're going to pay about two dollars and fifty cents um, for 748 gallons of water. That's a unit of water. Now, if you buy 748 gallons of bottled mm -hmm. water, you're going to pay upwards of $4,000. So I know it's really good, it's high quality, and it's one of the more affordable commodities. And if you're in a building like this, you're, it's factored into whatever it is, is that you're paying for rent, and so you won't see a 10% increase on your bill because of that. Um, and so the sewer system projects are just getting underway now, and they'll go on for the next 20 years. But every four years, we do a rate increase package so that we know what it's going to look like for the next four years. Um, I, if you have a question. I don't know if you know this or not, but what is the difference, the aquifer that's under the presidio that we're putting in the water system now? So, what do they call that? The, there's a Lobos Creek aquifer is the primary Lobos. source Lobos. Lobos Creek yeah which is a surface expression of the aquifer is the primary drinking water source for the Presidio under San Francisco from Golden Gate Park down to San Bruno there's another aquifer series of aquifers called the West Side Basin We're getting water from there. and San Francisco is now beginning to get water from that groundwater source and uh, blending it with other water sources to distribute it to uh, throughout San Francisco what is what are the differences between that water and the Hetch Hetchy water? Um, well, the main difference is that the water is underground, and so it is protected from surface contaminants. It's filtered 350 feet below the surface. Yeah, I know you test for something like 25 or 30 different things. Actually, we test for over 100 different constituents. So there's going to be some difference. What is it? The difference between the waters is that they'll have, the, what we will have to do to match the quality of Hetch Hetchy water, or the system water, is balance the pH. Because we want to make sure that we maintain the proper pH level, which. Tell me if it's lower. Um, it's gonna be exactly the same as the water you have now. Uh, for, and it's very important to maintain the pH level because it's anti-corrosive. So you put lime. I'm not sure what they treat it with. It's on our water quality report. I could get that back to you, Which I promise. Which then going to increase the sodium. No. no but you can't. The, I don't know. You can't treat it without, you're not going to put in lime because that increases, makes it harder. So it's got to be You know what, I don't know the chemistry part of all of that, but I could get that to you. I'd be happy to. I just, I, I, what, what, I've been, what I know is that when we deliver that water, 
It's going to have the same uh, hardness as the water we deliver now. I think the issue in Michigan was the issue with Michigan is they completely they, messed up the pH. They did not do the corrosive. Issue, was it not? It was. They did not balance the pH properly. It was not anti-corrosive. It, corros it corroded lead pipes, and people had lead in their water. Do you want another hard question? No. Yes. I want any question. So, we do not make that mistake here, and those people in Flint, uh, who made that happen in Michigan ought to be in jail. We live in very old buildings. Yes, you do. It has not. It's hard to pass by the situation with the public schools when we quite possibly have the same situation in these buildings. Sure. What, what you have old going, pipes. What is going on with the public schools? Okay. I don't want to... Are there any questions in general about the water? Yes. yes I'm going to answer the public school question yeah, one okay. second. So a general question I'm, about I'm water. I'm just focusing on, 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 on these, these, these buildings like this down right. here. Okay, in other places. Right. In San Francisco. Right. Now, I understand, and I've been born and raised, so I, I know the water between the San Francisco. However, these buildings are old down here. Right. I know they don't have the copper pipes. They probably don't have the copper pipes they used to, or, or the pipes they used to have. They replaced the copper, now they replace it with the plastic. But now, if there's a leak going on in, within the building, and it starts, one, one of the, uh, I forget what you call that stuff that goes around, brings water around, just caught up and goes through a little piping, then the water is not going to be clear. Now, who's responsible? I know you're not responsible for that. But is there an accountability that they have on on an agreement or a contract with you to make sure that that's taken care of? With so the of the buildings? let me let me sure let me uh, let me explain it this way. Okay. And this has to do with the schools as well. Okay. So the water department, us, we bring the water. We also operate and maintain the water delivery system every pipe and connection up to the meter, up to and including the meter. So associated with this building, there's a meter probably in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. The plumbing that comes from the meter into the building is the responsibility of the property owner. So in this case, TNDC is responsible for maintaining the plumbing within the building. Now, if we did a water quality test, and this is what's happening in the schools, if we did a water quality test and we found a contaminant in the case of schools, lead mm -hmm. in the school, in the water that's coming out of a drinking fountain or a tap, first thing we're going to do is recommend they close that off and don't allow young people or anybody to drink water out of that tap. Same thing we could do here. We can do a water quality test. I would ma imagine that TNDC does that. We will follow that water quality test as far back as we need to in the system to isolate the source of that contamination. So if we find that it's in the kitchen faucet, we'll replace the faucet. We used to sell them for $10 a piece. If it means you need a filter, we can recommend what kind of filter, and TNDC might be buying those filters. If it's further back, then we would recommend and help isolate the source of that contamination. And then the property owner would be responsible for whatever mitigation, whether it's close off the source, replace the plumbing in the schools, they're replacing the plumbing, they're upgrading the plumbing, they're, t they're taking those drinking fountains and things out of service. Why it's happening in the schools directly relates back to Flint, Michigan. And what California and many other states have done is have, they have said, we know that the population's most vulnerable to contamination by ingesting of lead are pregnant women and infants and children up to the age of five because it can cause brain damage. Mm -hmm. So they target uh, all the schools. The state passed a law, California, the State Water Resources Control Board passed a law that said a public water utility must provide water quality tests at any of the school, unified school district schools at at least five different fixtures on each of those campuses to test for lead. And anywhere we find it, and we found it in all of the schools we've tested so far in San Francisco, I think we found uh, levels that were above action in three different campuses. So they shut off the thing. They shut off the um, drinking fountain and they're fixing it. Now the state is looking at legislation to say, that also has to be done to every licensed child care center and preschool. Because we are the water provider, we have to provide that service for free. A, a property owner can get a water 
test for lead, personal property owner or multi-unit property owner, fire lab 